right, welcome back everybody. We are on the Chickamauga battlefield. We're super psyched to be here and we hope you're psyched to be watching. We hope you'll share this with your friends so as many people can get interested in our American history as possible. Before we get started talking about September 18th, the first day of the Battle of Chickamauga, the first of three days of the Battle of Chickamauga, I'm gonna pull out uh, some relevant pages of our handy dandy battle maps of the Civil War, the Western Theater. Hopefully many of you have already received this because you helped to donate to one of our efforts uh, last fall, I believe it was and you're able to uh, secure one of these already. I'm gonna turn and show kind of where we are. So this is the better part of the Chickamauga battlefield. Don't pay attention to the troops yet because I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is sort of it. This place is huge. If, if I'm correct, it's larger than Gettysburg in terms- 5,300 acres. 5,300 acres, so that's lots. It's a huge battlefield. You don't just see this place in a couple of hours. Um, and there are a number of crossings. You might see, you might know about Dyer's Ford up there. You can see a place called Reed's Bridge right here. You might go a little bit farther and get over toward Alexander's Bridge down here. And then there are other crossings that you've heard of, of course, called, uh, you know, Lee and Gordon's Mill and other things like that where troops can manage to get across. So in other words, on the whole battlefield, we're on the center, lower right sort of of it here at Alexander's Bridge. And we're going to talk about this fighting on the 18th, which really devolves into the fight for two of these crossings, Alexander's Bridge and Reed's Bridge. We're standing at the former. Jim Ogden, uh, historian here at the Chattanooga and Chickamauga National Military Park. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. And uh, we are here on the banks of um, West Chickamauga Creek. And Rosecrans um, uh, very quickly figured that um, Bragg's best chance of striking at him would be to, uh, to turn his left flank. But to do that, Bragg was going to have to cross West Chickamauga Creek. Um, and West Chickamauga Creek was then and is now a major obstacle. It's carved down into the underlying limestone, has steep, sharp banks, and can really only be crossed at bridges and fords. And so Rosecrans, concerned about this 14-mile space between himself and Chattanooga, Rosecrans begins, as he has small bodies of troops have come available, places them at potential crossing points over West Chickamauga Creek. Um, he, um, at, at Reed's Bridge, he puts Robert H.G. Minty's small brigade of Union Cavalry. And uh, on September the 15th, and two days later, when John Thomas Wilder's brigade of mounted infantry became available, Rosecrans sent Wilder and his brigade of five regiments, although only four of Wilder's regiments actually come with him to this point, and Wilder's artillery battery, commanded by the Indiana pharmacist Eli Lilly, uh, Wilder's Brigade comes here to Alexander's Bridge to guard this crossing and the nearby fords up and downstream on West Chickamauga Creek. Um, Wilder will um, will send troops right down to the wooden bridge that crossed the creek here at the um, at the time. But Wilder's main position is going to be located up at the top of the rise, overlooking West Chickamauga Creek across what was in 1863 large open fields that stretched more than 500 yards up to the top of the rise. Now we are on the battlefield park today, but this is one place where the pattern of fields and forests does not match what it did in 1863. All of these trees need to go to restore what was a large cornfield on this side of the road and a field in 1863 which had not been cultivated on the other side of the road. But Wilder's main position is up there. He puts some skirmishers along the banks of the creek. He sends his scouts out on the other side. Two of Eli Lilly's guns are put amongst the buildings of John P. Alexander's large farmstead on the top of the rise up there. Um, and this is where he is when on September the 18th, his patrols early in the morning detect approaching Confederates. Also, observers that Wilder has placed in trees that stand amongst the buildings of the Alexander Farmstead see the clouds of dust driven into the air. That drought that I've talked about has made the dirt road surfaces um, uh, utterly dry and the movement on them has ground that dirt into a fine powdery dust that the soldiers describe as being ankle or shoe mouth deep. And now as these columns move forward, they drive that dust in the air, giving away those movements of large bodies of troops. And Wilder's patrols begin to fall back in front of the approaching Confederates. And about noon on September the 18th, 
while Minty is fighting against Bushrod Johnson and Forrest up on the Reeds Bridge corridor, Wilder is suddenly confronted by the arrival of the Union, Ar uh, excuse me, of the Confederate Army Reserve Corps under William Henry Talbert Shot Pouch Walker, that fiery Southern nationalist um, uh, who has come back to the Confederate Army and been sent to reinforce Bragg, and his column now approaches to try to seize Alexander's Bridge. God, that, that was a lot of stuff here. Stay here for a second, Jim, before we move on to our next guest, too. So first of all, if Reed's Bridge sounds familiar to some of y'all, um, watching is because you, the members of the organization, help the trust work with local partners and preserve both sides of Reed's Bridge. It's a great acquisition and really uh, is really important to telling the story of the Battle of Chickamauga. Two, I, have, I can remember reading some accounts where some of Wilder's men are actually here and then they're shifted over left I mean, they, imagine all of a sudden you've got forces coming down both roads. Um, uh, f third, let me say hello to our friends, uh, uh, Ted and uh, Deborah, because we were talking about uh, Eli Lilly. You know who you are. And then what was my question for you, Jim? Yes, I think it's my favorite nickname of the whole Civil War. Why is he called Shot Pouch, Shot Pouch Walker? <laughs> Well, Walker um, uh, in the pre-war pre army serving on the, uh, the western frontier and against the, uh, the Indians had been wounded several times um, and um, as was, um, was somewhat um, uh, typical at the time, some of those projectiles had been left in his, um, his body. And having served long on the western frontier, he is bronzed by the sun, has wrinkly skin, and some of his friends tease him about being like the old leather bag that a civilian hunter would wear to carry their um, their round balls for their um, their rifle, um, a shot pouch. Um, he is weathered like that leather shot pouch. So I don't want to be like him in, in a number of ways, but I think you might not remember anything else about these videos, but you'll probably remember shot pouch walker. That's pretty cool stuff. So let's uh, start talking about some more of those Confederate soldiers over here. And to bring the Confederates on toward the bridge, let's go to our friend Dr. Anthony Hodges. He's president of the Tennessee Civil War Preservation Association. You got it right, Jerry. I'm standing here with Chickamauga Creek to my back, Alexander Bridge to my rear. Immediately on the other bank would have been the deployment of the brigades of Daniel C. Govan and Edward C. Walthall, mainly Mississippians. As Jim noted, the bridge was wooden, and the Union soldiers of Wilder's Brigade have ripped up many of the planks. In fact, Company A will form, build a readout of the planks of Alexander's Bridge in the road uh, just to my left. So as the uh, brigades of Govan and Walthall deploy, they're met by the massed fire of Wilder Spencer rifles in the fight for the forge to cross Chickamauga Creek, to cross here at Reed's Bridge. The vital crossing of the Confederates will occur right here where we're standing now. Jim. The, um, uh, when Walthall's um, uh, men advance, uh, Eli Lilly will uh, open fire with first two of his um, three-inch ordnance rifles and then bring two more of them into play. Begins to explode um, projectiles amongst the advancing Mississippians. As the Mississippians get closer, wilder skirmishers along the banks of the creek open fire. Um, and then the men of Company A of the 72nd Indiana, who are behind the rail, uh, the plank um, pile across the road, they open fire. And Wilder also engages two of his um, available four regiments, um, sending two of them off to support um, Minty. But the other two regiments will, uh, will engage and they'll stop Walker cold dead in his tracks, inflict on Walker 105 casualties in just 15 minutes time and force Walker to move downstream to find another place to cross the creek. He will, a place called Byrams or Lambert's Ford, um, but it will cost the Confederates time and reveal more to the Union Army exactly what it is that Braxton Bragg is trying to do. Wilder um, does an excellent job in delaying here, but most critically, his communication to Rosecrans about the threat that is developing allows Rosecrans to react by putting George Thomas's men on the march late on September the 18th to reposition to reduce that space between the Union Army and Chattanooga, and it will have a significant impact on what becomes the Battle of Chickamauga that opens with the fighting on September the 19th. 
Chris Mikowski of Emerging Civil War. I have risen up out of the river of death to come talk to you today. Uh, first of all, I want to say, Dr. Hodges, I could listen to you talk all day long with that great Southern accent. Just fantastic. Jim, I want to ask you a question because you talk about the fighting that starts on September 19th. And traditionally, people think about the Battle of Chickamauga as being the 19th and 20th of September. But the actions that we're talking about here on the 18th are really an integral part of that overall battle. Why do they get forgotten about? Right. Well, the, e even amongst the veterans, the focus became September 19 and 20. Um, and, and the 18th um, will largely um, be overlooked or, uh, or forgotten. A lot of that just simply has to do with the, the, uh, the focus on the heaviest, the bloodiest um, uh, fighting. Um, unfortunately, in a lot of ways, a lot of our, um, our interest in our country's history um, has been on the, uh, the bloodiest, the costliest um, uh, events or battles. Um, but um, uh, also, uh, because things did not really go the way they were planned on the 18th, particularly from the Confederate perspective, they will get overlooked in the post-war period. And, and soon the battle is just recognized as the 19th and 20th. But when you look at the battle from the military perspective, and some of you all um, uh, know one of the things I do as, my, uh, as part of my job here as the staff historian, so I work with military groups that are using the battlefield here as a teaching tool, a staff ride. In fact, I had a group of Tennessee Army National Guard MPs even this morning. Um, the, um, uh, when you look at the battle from the perspective of what the two commanders were trying to do, this is indeed, as Gary has described, a three-day battle, September 18, 19, and 20. Um, and so realizing those events of the 18th and the trust acquisition of that property at Reed's Bridge really helps to, um, to do that, particularly as it gets developed into an accessible public area. Um, it, it makes more sense then about how the battle unfolds. It's not just two armies that blunder into one another in a, near a small portable steam sawmill in the woods um, of the valley of West Chickamauga Creek. And Chris, I'll say one more thing. You um, use this creek's nickname, the River of Death. Um, and it was already known as that even at the time of the battle. That predates it. It comes from the Cherokee occupation of this area um, in, um, in prior to the, uh, the Civil War. So this creek already had a nickname, which this battle only further cements in association with the uh, stream West Chickamauga Creek. That's good to know because I, you know, a lot of times you just figure that it's just too convenient that any Native American name, of course, has to be House of Peace, River of Death, River of Blood, or something like that. Were you going to add something, Dr. Hodges? I was uh, simply going to say about the 18th, as Jim noted, in the early interpretations of the battle that we used to bring visitors here, the 18th was hardly mentioned. But I guarantee if you one of the men shot or wounded on the 18th, <laughs> that's part of the Battle of Chickamauga. <laughs> I think that's a great point. You know, we are going to spend more time on this battlefield shooting these videos than many of the soldiers spent on this battlefield during the Battle of Chickamauga. And if they were only here on the 18th, that is their battle. Now, two things left. Uh, one, you know, we've been looking at this yellow bridge off to the right over here. Um, and then you can see another smaller bridge over there. On the way here, Jim Ogden pointed out that an Alexander's Bridge that was here uh, in the middle of this past century was over there. Can you straighten this out? Was this one long bridge uh, at the time? What are we looking at here? Yeah, at, at the time of the, um, of the war, there was just a single wooden span that, um, that stretched across the creek here. And, um, and the, the maps um, uh, suggest or indicate there was just a few yards downstream of the alignment of this bridge. But in the early days of the National Military Park, um, there, were a system, there was a system of approach roads, a hundred miles of road over which the troops uh, moved leading um, to, the, uh, to the battle. And, um, and the Park Commission built a series of bridges over West Chickamauga Creek on those approach roads, and they built a new bridge, a steel bridge, across the creek here as well. Now that bridge was replaced in 2007 with the structure that you see here, but the um, 1890s abutments, um, the stone abutments, are still here today um, on either side of, um, of the creek from that Park Commission bridge, uh, which 
if you uh, recognize the importance of what the veterans did here in cre creating the Battlefield Park, that effort is now as, import as an important part of the story of this National Military Park as the battle is in 1863. Um, but a wooden bridge here at the time of the battle. All right, great, and lastly, and of course I never warn people I'm gonna do this. You know, you all know I, I love my middle name trivia and nickname trivia, but, and Chris, you can play too at, from behind the camera. And y'all, you can play at home as well. Uh, if you're at work, and we know some of you are at work watching right now, go ahead and yell out the answer. If your kids are trying to concentrate on their homework, go ahead and yell out the answer. So I'm going to name the watercourse crossing um, and you have to name the battlefield. So if I said Thedford's Ford, Chickamauga. 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 What if I said Snavely's Ford? Manassas. Chris? Manassas. No. No. Antietam. 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 Thank oh, you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, Butler's Ford? Uh, Shepherdstown. Yeah. Shepherdstown. Good. How about Brown's Ferry? Chattanooga. Chattanooga. All right. Harper's Ferry. Oh, hold on. West <laughs> Wait. Okay. McAllister's Dam. Anyone remember that? That's Gettysburg. Uh, Mitchell's Ford. I'm getting tough now. Uh, that's on the Rappahannock. Um, well, there's one on the Rappahannock there. and then one on Bulls Run. How about, let me let me help Chris out a little bit. Ely's Ford. Ely's Ford. That's Ch uh, Chancellorsville, over in Oxford. North Anna. And North Anna. thank you for yeah. participating. I have more, so <laughs> don't you worry about it. We hope you did well at home. Uh, we hope you have a better understanding and appreciation for September 18th, 1863, here on the Chickamauga Battlefield. Who knows where we will emerge next, but thank you so much for watching and for supporting Battlefield Preservation and Education.